1993, astronomers discovered a strange object using the Palomar Observatory. Calculations showed this was a fragmented comet that had been torn apart in a close encounter with Jupiter the year before. And it was then predicted that it was going to hit the planet Jupiter and be the first ever cometary impact witnessed by humans. So this literally was a once in a millennium opportunity to see something like this. And I missed it. I was at school, I didn't have a setup, I didn't have a telescope, I certainly didn't have an observatory. So the question is, can we see something like this today? Astronomers have witnessed five massive explosions on the planet Jupiter as fragments from the shoemaker Levy collided with the planet. Larger explosions are expected later this week. They called it the biggest explosion in the solar system for hundreds of years. Half an hour after the first comet fragment went in, the impact was still visible. We're going to see things and we're going to learn a lot. That's the good news tonight. So there's one place that's recorded billions of years of planetary history and it's not too far away. So this is Barry Fitzgerald. He's an all-round top chap. He's editor of the BAA Lunar Section Circular. He's a prize-winning astronomer. And he saw Shoemaker Levy 9 when it crashed into the Jupiter's surface all those years ago. Question for you then. Comet Shoemaker Levy 9. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see it? What yes, were your impressions? Yeah. yeah, what did you make of it? I was just amazed that, so it was, I was using an eight inch F8 Dobsonian, it was an old dark star one. So it was a nice telescope, I think the David Hines mirrors. And uh, Jupiter was in the west and um, stuck the telescope on it, brought it into focus, and it was immediately apparent there is at least one, possibly two dark smudges um, on the um, on the disc. Um, I can't remember if I saw any structure in the in the, the larger, more prominent one. It's so long ago now, and I didn't make any notes. But it was amazing to think that, you know, you'd read about the build-up to it, what was going to happen, and you go out and you actually see it in real time you see those two dark smudges one of the two dark smudges on the disc and they were so conspicuous you could not miss them so bear in mind as you know you know it was good good planetary dobsonian it was a good telescope um but to just to be able to see them was just quite amazing really so so the impact had happened hadn't it on the far side it and it rotated into view yeah it actually happened so the impact had occurred whilst you know that that region was on the limb or behind the limb and then it had rotated into view so it just you know oh as advertised there it is remarkable so barry knows of several comet sites cometary impact sites on the moon he's going to talk us to the best one but first a quick word he's going to use a site called quick map now this is a nasa website and it's got all their satellite imagery probe imagery all in one place and he's going to talk us through how to use that I'll put a link into the description. There's a link below as well. Okay, right. Right, let's try and find this crater. It's here somewhere. Uh, I mean, it is, it's a telescopic object, so I can see it in, in my telescope. Ah, oh, here we go, right. <clears throat> here we go here. So if you zoom in on this, so this is, so this is a multiple crater here. All, they're all lined up. So they're all travelling on the same azimuth when they impacted, and you can you can tell the um, the simultaneous impacts. So certainly this cluster here, because you've got this ridge that comes out, and that forms when the ejector blankets from each individual crater interacts with with its neighbour, and you get those lines out to the side from from simultaneous impacts. So all those were travelling in a line. So while the moon climbs higher, I've just popped inside to get myself a cup of tea ready because you, you can't observe without a cup of tea. And I'm so excited to be seeing this um, three billion year old cometary impact. I'm three billion years late to witness the real thing. So this is my lunar atlas. This is a Rice Atlas Mond. It's by Oculum Press. And it's a really good lunar atlas. It uses lunar orbiting photographs. So it's the same as the NASA quit map. And I find it a really high quality atlas, lots of detail, and the pages are sort of like this plastic 
covering so you can have them outside in the dew. So Battery was kindly talking us through where to find this and it's on the edge, typical, typical on the edge of that crater but it's on split between maps page 22 and 23. So let's flip through the book. 26. So here we are, here's page 22. And what we need to do is find the crater Ptolemaeus. And it's just down here. There you are, Catina Davy. So Catina is the Latin or Greek or whatever it is for the crater chain. So find Ptolemaeus, this large flat open crater. Now the way to find it as well, if you go down here, there's a large long linear feature called Rupes Recta, the straight wall. It looks a bit like a sword, it looks like that's the handle, and there's the sort of sword blade. And if you head north from Rupes Recta, follow the line of the wall up, that actually takes you to Katina Davy. So I've got the Atlas, I've got my cup of tea, let's go outside. So I've just rolled the roof back, this is beautifully crisp, clear, cold night. Absolutely gorgeous, beautiful moon just shining up above there. So um, I've got the telescope set up, so let's go and then go to the moon and then click go to. something good to focus on let's do that first not far off focus so as before I'm using my motorized focuser there we go it doesn't look too bad right now here is the hard part there's a way hair sticking out from under my hat right so the hard part is I've got my lunar atlas and I've now got to orientate the atlas to what I can see in the camera, so bear with me. Oh, there's the straight walls. I recognise the straight wall. Look at that. Oh, wow. So that's the lunar, that's the straight wall, the lunar wall. And it's this cliff on the lunar surface so when the sun's shining on this angle you get to see the dark shadow so totally flat terrain and then there's this cliff it's not really a cliff it's quite a gentle slope but it looks like a cliff when you're looking at it on the moon I'm looking at the atlas and i want to go up aha so i recognize that crater So that crater, yeah, so this crater I've got now is Alphonsus. And looking at that screen, it really does have a very bright central peak. And if you look, if you look carefully at Alphonsus, another cool thing is it actually has these very dark patches. It's got quite a bright crater floor. It's got these dark patches, and those are volcanic ash deposits. It's got little crater, little volcanoes on the, on the rim of the crater, and that's the actual ash left behind these pyroclastic deposits I think they're called. So let's swing across and I think I'm really in the right place now. So a little bit further. Here we go, so across to, there it is, yes, there it is. So there we have it, that is a impact scar, that line of craters was formed by a comet millions if not billions of years ago got too close to the earth, got dragged out. The gravity of the earth dragged it out into this long sort of impact chain, this long sort of chain like pearls on a necklace. And then they crashed into the moon, just as the train goes past. And they then crashed into the moon, leaving this real tight, close chain of craters, one after the other. And that was all caused by this comet breaking up in the Earth's gravity field. They're very similar to Comet Shoemaker 9 when it crashed into Jupiter. So we're going to have to take a picture of this. So how are we doing? Right, histogram is at about 70%. So 
I'm just getting the settings just right. I've got the histogram at about 70%, 60-70% I find works well on the moon. I'll check the focus. I'm shooting with um, the minimum gain and about 50 millisecond exposure and that means I'm hopefully beating the seeing. So we'll stack, we'll take 10,000 frames and then we'll stack the sharpest 1,000. Hopefully that'll get a really high resolution image of this crater chain. Right, focus is good, settings are good. Let's press the capture. So it's a beautiful night. I can see Orion, seven sisters, and this beautiful fat moon just lighting up the, lighting up the trees. Absolutely glorious. So good morning, it's now the following morning. I am just about to process the video we took last night. And if you want to see how I do my lunar image processing, then check out the video I put out at Christmas. Now what I'm gonna do is now we're gonna flick over back to Barry and get Barry's views on the surface geology of what's happening around Katina Davy and the, the features and interesting facts we can interpret. I've got a thing about low angle impacts. So it's, it's my only advice. <laughs> uh, okay. Drugs and the rock and roll just don't cut it, do they, for you? Sorry? No. Dr uh, drugs and rock and roll for you. Well, they did until I discovered this. <laughs> so, yeah, if you go there, into, yes. we've got the, you've got the straight scepter between the individual craters. Let's just try a different angle. Yeah, straight scepter, you can see there. So these are very boxy looking things. They're probably boxy because each crater forming process interacted with its neighbour <clears throat> and so the growth of the crater was maybe suppressed along this direction here but whereas it was uninterrupted to the side and you can just see the traces of those um, ejector patterns coming out from the intersections between each crater and if we put a line let's put a, a line across here <laughs> Yes. This is a cross section and that's typical of a low angle impact. So with low angle impacts, the um, the uprange wall, so the direction the impactor came from is usually much lower than the downrange wall. And the uprange uh, part of the crater is much, much steeper and it's excavated much more deeply uprange than it is downrange. So the maximum excavation took place here and it was not as if the cratering process wasn't as efficient here. So that looks as if it shares the trajectory with this crater chain. So I'd imagine again, you've got a large object there with a load of smaller objects in trail behind it. So with, why would one, one be so much larger than the rest? Do, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I, I don't, well, I suppose it depends on the, on the, uh, the constitution of the original body you know because most of these near-earth asteroids they're rubble piles and so i suppose you know sort of as it if it is if it tidally interacts with the earth it could be disrupted it pulls it out into a bit of a string of spaghetti just one, um, one is much larger the original core maybe yeah so that could be the the original core and these bits are bits that have been pulled off from it due to tidal interactions and then they adopt a, you know, that trail configuration. So that's the type of thing I think has happened, has happened here. That's what happened to Shoemaker Levy, you saw it. Because on the video of Shoemaker Levy night, they're sort of pulled out into like a, a string of pearls, aren't they? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah and the yeah. impact and, and Jupiter slowly rotating underneath. Yes, you yeah. See that sort of... If Jupiter wasn't impacting, it wasn't rotating, they'd all be impacting one on top of another sort of thing in yeah. a line. Um, I, I think with this, um, the separation between them is so close that I don't think the rotation would make any difference um, oh, okay. because that crater chain would have formed in, you know, sort of seconds. Uh, so it's like a sort of strafing, a strafing run. Uh, and it wasn't, they weren't sufficiently, you know, so imagine Shoemaker Levy 9, it was stretched. I don't know how long it ended up being stretched out, but there was a considerable separation between the individual components. Yeah. Well, from start to finish, it was several days, wasn't it? There was hours between each impact. I, I can't remember now, to be yeah. honest with you, but it, it was a protracted period, you know, as you say, hours between them. 
So my thanks to Barry for his expert advice on analysing this fascinating, beautiful crater chain and the surface geology. We actually spoke for over an hour on using QuipMap and using the tools therein. So I'm going to edit that down and I'll publish that up. So if you want to catch that, don't forget to subscribe. Next weekend, or this weekend that's coming, we are off to the Kelling Heath Star Party, the Spring Star Party. So I'm going to bring you more videos of the big telescopes, the imaging rigs, and some of the observing under those dark skies. Fingers crossed, the skies will clear. So I'll catch you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll wish you clear and pleasant skies.